table for your Halloween decor this year, then look no farther than this historical recreations tutorial video. Today we'll be creating gothic flowers. You will need a plastic pot and a dollar store artificial flower of your choice. Are you ready? Let's create. Let's have a recap of the materials that you'll need to make your gothically good flower today. Today you'll be needing your artificial flower from your dollar store, as well as your plastic pot and I have also made sure that I got a base to go with it. Our color of choice today is an acrylic black number 999, our handy dandy glue gun and plenty of glue sticks, floral wire if you can find it at any craft store and or some of these long twisty ties as long as you can do this there's wire inside and has a nice form to it you can use these as well a nice soft acrylic brush and lots of foam to put into our pot. Are you ready? Let's do this. As you can see I've already started making some circles. What you would need to do to start off with our project is use a pencil and circle out some of the styrofoam to fill inside of your pot. Now I highly recommend make four bases and one large one as a topper. Now very carefully cut these out and on to creating our pot. You'll be needing your hot glue gun to glue your pot to your base. After you have glued your pot to your base then using your styrofoam wheels that you have cut out put them into your pot. Now if your pot is unstable because the flower that you have chosen is too heavy and pulls the flower pot down, you could always put some clean sand at the bottom of your pot after you use your hot glue gun. But right now, we want to put our foam into our pot, cut it down to size, and pack it off and make sure it's level. Now you should be at this level. I have the base now hot glued to my pot and the styrofoam is in there you can look now there's a bit of a depth to where I packed in the styrofoam in there and the reason is we're going to coat that with something a little bit later all right let's go on what we discovered was that's basically how the manufacturer just put it in there to hold it so today what we want to do now is we want to transform these happy orchid flowers into something more gothic. So let's start staining up these flowers and also do the leaves today. Let's get out our acrylic paints. For our next part of our tutorial, I have pulled the leaves down, I have pulled the flower back, and I am now applying some black over here. I just started doing that. And we're going to create a slurry using about one part water and one part black acrylic paint. And we want to start painting up like this, our leaves. We want the green to show through for our orchid here. This is kind of important. We want that green to show through. We're going to just darken that and paint all of our foliage down. This is going to take a little, bit of a little while, but I'll have to coat every surface. But when I finish, I will let you see when it's done. What a difference. Now, it didn't take me very long, but right now the foliage is drying. And I did a little bit down here and also the stem which comes out of the flower. So now let's let this dry and then we'll move on to the flower itself. Foliage dried in a few minutes. I put it under a hair dryer. Now, here, using the same slurry, and these are just silk flowers, we want to stain them. And in this case, as I just discovered that I may need a pair of tweezers here, we want to create that illusion that the flower is primarily a black flower However, that undertone yellow and the manufacturing color that is already on there will show through. 
this is going to have that deep, dark, mysterious look to it when it's put on our table. So I'm going to now paint all of the orchid flowers the same way. Then I'll show you what it's going to look like when it's finished. Cool is now that our flower is drying and we did all that, let's start working on this pot. So what we have is 21st century plastic pot. Let's make this terracotta. How do you make terracotta? Well, here on Historical Recreations, we can do everything. Let's learn how to mix up the appropriate paint to transform this into a terracotta pot. How do you mix terracotta paint? Today I'll be showing you with this tutorial how to mix up anything into terracotta color. We're going to be starting off with Napthal Red Light number 615. I'm using an Epic brand acrylic 605 permanent yellow deep. I'm also using a 999 black acrylic. My favorite of all colors in the acrylic family is a burnt umber number 925 and we're using a little dop of white today i'm using a 901 acrylic so let's put out our palette here and start our mixing to get your colors laid out again we're going to be using the red the yellow the black the burnt umber and the white so i'm going to do a generous amount of the red as the basis we're going to be mixing in our yellow you're going to see kind of a pumpkin orange being formed. If you want the most perfect pumpkin orange, a napthal red and a permanent yellow deep number four, or whatever color you can find, work perfectly for the most perfect pumpkin color imaginable. Now, once you blend those two in, you get that pumpkin color. We are now going to add a dop of black. To this to tone it down you can see I'm using the cross hatching technique to blend all of my paints and then we'll be using a little dop of the burnt umber here to even bring it down a little bit further. You're going to see a nice burnt orange color now forming. Once you have created this, bring in your white. Watch the transformation. There it is. Boom. We have created terracotta. Now, if you're like me and you love terracotta, which is a great color. You're going to be painting all kinds of things to look like this color. And just get a terracotta pot if you have one and check the color to make sure it is in your range of liking. That is a beautiful terracotta finish. Now let's go paint our pot. What I got over here is my plastic pot. And now I'm going to be applying my terracotta finish on it. And watch the transformation begin. You can do this to all of your plastic pots at home if you wanted to. Transform them and turn them terracotta. So I'm going to finish this and let you see what it looks like when it's done. And our final product once it is dried. Terracotta City. Here we come. Now with our clay pot I'm using acrylic 999 black and a little tub of water over here and a soft brush. This one is uh, number 8 and I'm going to create a darkening slurry to really bring down 
there may be one to two ratio over here and we want to create a much darker and more sinister looking pot than we have right now layer it on and just let that muddy up a bit dripping down and let that dry right on there you may want to put on maybe two or three layers depending on how creepy you want it to look but uh, just let this dry once you put it on okay and after I finish this let's see what it looks like when it's done comes the next cool part of my tutorial is the tentacles that we're going to be adding to our flower so I have these white twisty ties out here and I just want to add some of the black that we had used previously from our first project and I'm going to model these up a bit I'm going to add black and white in sections which is very very cool Tim Burton always added black and white or, or kind of stripes to everything that he did in his movies if you checked it out from Beetlejuice to Willy Wonka you see stripes in everything Nightmare Before Christmas so I'm going to model these up by leaving a space of white in certain intervals kind of cool to be doing actually. Now once you got that, space them out and then let them dry. Now we've got our pot done, we've got our foam in place, now we're going to push and put our stem into our base over here. I believe I'm going to have to cut that out and hot glue that down. Now one element that's really bothering me right now are these roots. I'm going to take a pair of scissors and I'm going to cut them off because we have a plan here at Historical Recreations. That went right in. I just pushed that right in. Did no cutting or anything needed. So now push that down a little bit more. Okay, we're going to cut these roots off and we're going to change this around. Okay, we just cut off the roots really easily. I just use this little tiny pair of scissors. Next element, I'm gonna show you how to make artificial soil. If you're wondering what this is, it is tea leaves from Lipton tea that had been left over and dried. So every time you have a tea bag that you use, after you use a tea, you rip it open, lay it down on a sheet of paper and dry it. And it looks like, yeah, you guessed it, artificial soil. Today we're going to paint this up with our glue. I'm going to paint this whole surface in, interiorly here and then we're going to sprinkle our artificial soil on there. Are you ready? Let's do it.
now with our tentacles and if you list if you like the black and white great keep it i'm going to go in here with an extra color today this is an olive green number at 955 it's a great plant color it matches it matches our plant very well i'm using today a very large soft brush like before and i'm going to be doing the stamping method again on our white areas okay doing the tim burton thing over here adding the green okay i really want these tentacles to look very eerie because how many plants have tentacles so let me finish this and then i'll show you what it looks like as we move into the black and white this dried on here beautifully it only took about two or three hours and today we're going to be using some of this i've got some amos air dry clay we are going to recreate the root system the color i'm using today is black you can use any color you like if you want to paint it later there's no problem using some acrylics but i'm going to use a black foundation clay i'm going to recreate some really spooky roots that are just going to climb right over this pot and then we're going to paint them up later okay so i just opened the clay up really nicely here and you get some of this out. Black is a decent color to use as a foundation. You can get all kinds of different types of black clays. I'm using the spiraling method over here, the spiraling technique, to create some very twisted root systems. And I'm going to make quite a few of these, and then I'm going to branch them out from the plant. So it's going to take a little bit of time here. By twisting, it's going to make that really knotted and strange look to it. So let's now make about four or five of these and then add them to our plant. Now once you get your root systems the way that you want to, make sure they're nice and knotted up, start applying them to your plant. Let them naturally flow over And just place them right on there. These are going to look really, really nasty. I love it. It's got a nice form shape to it. And hang over the pot. It's a little bit there. Okay. I want one root. This one came out all knotted. I love it. These all from the base. This. Look at the root system. It's going to look really, really creepy. You can get an idea of what I'm doing over here. I'm going to make some more. Put one this way over here. Look at that. It's just starting to grow. Okay, let's make a few more and then add them. Okay, so let's look now at this root system that I put on here. Uh, this is going to add a completely creepy uh, detail to our plant. As you can see, I crisscrossed them over. Kind of looks like a lava, lava flow but uh, it's going to add quite a bit of detail for our plant. Once your antennas have dried, you may need to use a brush or any type of uh, object that has kind of a large area and a more of a thinner area. We're going to take one of our tentacles and then we're going to start off at a very large uh, area of a spiral and we're going to spiral these around. And as we go down, it's going to get more and more thinner, which is what we want. We're going to spiral that a little bit tighter and tighter until we get the right spiral. We have just created a tentacle now that we're going to put on our flower. So we have how many of these? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them to do. So let's do them all now. Now, as you can see, we have these really dark flowers. I'm using the tentacles and I'm going behind there. We're just going to attach them to the back of the flower and just squeeze those in place and let them hang. You can actually pull them out a little bit more so they create a hanging design. Go behind the flower, put them on, squeeze them into place, let them hang. 
to show you how awesome that root system came in. All right, let's now put some highlights on the root system. Okay, so let's now do some detailing on our root system over here. Today I'm using a black number 999 and a titanium white number 901 acrylic. I'm also using two very special brushes today. I'm using a three watercolor brush and it's got the long bristles on there and then I'm also using a soft short which is a 100. Okay, so let's now mix up a slurry using our water and our white, we're going to be working into the white and the black. We're going to be creating kind of a dark mixture at first. Okay, we don't want it the same color as the roots. We want a little bit darker like this to create a gray. And we're going to start detailing, adding some lines. Now, the detail, adding some lines now to the roots, adding age, okay. we finished this and I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. Check out this root system, all the snarls and gnarls and twists and turns all came out in the detailing. And I made sure that each and every one of the ends had a white tip on it, like a fingernail. And going into the home stretch, I'm using a Napthal Red Light number 615 to do the interior of the flower stamens. So now let's create some detailing and make sure the eye goes right towards this area of the flower. And for the next part of my demonstration on our plant today, I have something very important to show you. This product is called Plackers. You can get them at any store. These came from Walmart and you can buy them online. I'm quite sure Amazon has them. If you notice very carefully, there is this shape, uh, this pick that you can like use to pick your teeth. Well, today we are creating these. If you're wondering what they are, they're going to be teeth. We're going to put teeth on our plant. I also highly recommend getting some tweezers and getting your glue gun back out because we're going to be putting them on and how to cut them off well i'll show you very carefully i'm using a very very soft pair of wire cutters and at a 45 degree angle you make an indentation and pops right off there is a tooth and with this let's start applying them to our flowers so what i'm doing now is i'm taking the tooth i know that it's going to go this way i'm going to put the tooth on this way and i'm just applying a little bit of hot glue to the base over here and now let's apply it to our flower there applying teeth is fun it's a little bit crooked but i like it Very gothic, sinister plant for your table this year. Gothically yours, Professor.